from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The world is in the process of determining cleaner energy forms for baseload, storage and decarbonization, which are not always economically viable, according to energy company Uhuru Africa. The company poses that biomass can support solar, wind and hydro energy. Malone Arnoldi gathered some insights. While the world is moving increasingly towards the use of renewable energy with energy storage systems and hydrogen being posed as a solution, Uhuru Africa has pointed to some flaws within this reasoning, particularly in the South African context, and suggests that hydrogen, particularly cleaner forms thereof, is instead apt for decarbonization. The company says hydrogen requires more energy to produce than can be gained from its consumption, while its production requires large amounts of water and energy, which the country does not have to spare. Uhuru Africa CEO Mark Kaplan unpacks some common misconceptions on hydrogen. So we're talking about biohydrogen, green hydrogen. The good news, which is not around the hydrogen, is that the world is moving towards uh, decarbonization and ironically it's being pressured purely by financial interests. So it's the investment community, it's the global banking system, which are exerting the pressure which is driving our major corporates and our countries to decarbonize. So the good news is we are decarbonizing. The world is expected next year to increase uh, its outputs of renewable energy by at least 8%. And over time that will increase. And South Africa is looking to increase its renewable energy, which is almost entirely solar and wind, by 25%. That's the good news. The big challenge around current renewable forms which are solar and wind, is that that is not base load, it's intermittent. And so the challenge is the development of storage systems. Huge amounts are being invested into the evolution of different storage systems, including hydro and including batteries and more efficient batteries and various other uh, forms. And what has emerged out of all of this is hydrogen is now being presented as the ultimate solution to storage systems. So, um, and that's why we're talking about hydrogen. Now, unfortunately, that is a little premature because the, coming back to the economics, the economics of developing hydrogen as a storage system don't work and they won't for a long time to come. The technologies required to do that haven't evolved sufficiently. And in fact, it becomes detrimental to our energy supply system to deploy renewable energy into developing hydrogen as a storage system. So we're some way off from that. When Biden took office, he suggested that the target should be 10 years, 2030, before we are able to develop suitable storage system through hydrogen. And um, the, the global hype around hydrogen is premature. And my hope is that that doesn't slow down our investment into other fields because hydrogen will still take some time to get there. Uhuru Africa believes that the longer society buys into the hype around hydrogen, the longer it will avoid developing viable green energy policy that provides viable decarbonization opportunities. While hydrogen production from around the world mostly comes from natural gas, coal or heavy fuel oils, there are promising opportunities for zero emission hydrogen that requires less water and absorbs carbon. Uhuru Africa director David Sonnenberg says biohydrogen can make great strides towards reversing climate damage and can effectively decarbonize an entire operation, such as mining, including its logistics. He elaborates on the benefits that a biohydrogen economy can hold for South Africa. We've got a product called indigo hydrogen and amber hydrogen. It's part of this colorful aspect of hydrogen colors, which somebody dictated to quite a long time ago. Our indigo and amber hydrogen is a biohydrogen which we think it gives us the opportunity of developing a hydrogen economy in South Africa which will be localized and in corridors and service industries like fuel refineries, fertilizer production, uh, food production and transport. Currently, 95% of South Africans' hydrogen comes from fossil fuel. And if we can change that input to biomass, we green the industry immediately. So the opportunity is rural, 
developmental and it's not the kind of opportunity that's in the media at the moment about this new hydrogen economy. There's actually a catch-22 at the moment. There's no fueling stations because there are no cars and there are no cars because there are no fueling stations. And to do that you have to do this incredible economy. We need something that fits into the existing structure and we think biohydrogen can do that. The idea of liquefying or compressing hydrogen and making it inefficient doesn't sit well with me. We would rather produce hydrogen from biomass grown by local communities at mines or processing plants or fertilizer plants, use it there and reduce their carbon footprint immediately. By replacing biohydrogen with the current fossil hydrogen in South Africa, immediately you would get rid of 95% of, of the hydrogen emissions. Uhuru Africa manufactures what it calls indigo and amber biohydrogen, for which it uses biomass to produce. The company grows plants that are typically found in dry areas, including spatboom, cactus pear, and a C4 grass called vetiver. Uhuru Africa biohydrogen lead Philip Rickard discusses how the company produces biohydrogen. Uhuru Africa have developed two pathways to biohydrogen, which is bio, uh, hydrogen from biomass. Um, the first of these is called indigo biohydrogen. In this process we produce, uh, using anaerobic digestion, we produce methane from biomass in the standard uh, biogas production format. We then take this methane and use it in a steam methane reformation process which has been used in industry for many years. In this way we avoid getting any fossil CO2 emissions and we are mainly just recycling the CO2 that's already in the atmosphere. The second pathway is thermal decomposition of biomass. So what we do is we heat biomass in an anaerobic uh, environment without oxygen to about 800 degrees Celsius. We produce a gas and from this gas, which is rich in hydrogen, we also then extract more hydrogen using the steam reformation and water gas shift reaction. Um, these processes are both made from bi uh, biomass which is uh, sourced from local sustainable farms um, in areas that were previously not be able to be utilized as agricultural farming. Marginalized land, dry areas, we've got biomasses adapted specifically to drier climates um, and in this way we can develop new econ economies in areas which were previously struggling. That's Creo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.